Thanks for joining us at Right on Replicas, where we bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review covers Matt and Debbie Hayes Pro Street Thunderbird. It's Revell kit number 4356, and it's a 125 scale kit with skill level 3 for the advanced builder. There's 126 parts molded in white, chrome, clear, and clear red with vinyl tires. It's a re-release of the kit uh, that's copyrighted from 1990 and re-released in 2014. Uh, it is a beautiful rendition of the hot pink uh, award-winning car that they used to race. It has a highly detailed uh, motor, nice chassis, full interior, and separate parts for easy detailing there. And the body represents the car pretty accurately and has very few mold line issues. The chrome is bright and clean, the decals are crisp, and the instructions are straightforward and well detailed with color callouts and part numbers. Overall, when you're done, it's about eight and a half inches long, three and an eighth inch wide, and two inches high. Here are the decals for this kit. They're very colorful and the registry is good. I strongly suggest that you use some of the aftermarket setting solutions for these decals as they're very large and it'll help the uh, decals conform to the body's contours and stick as uh, well as they can. Also note that we'll be using uh, Model Master Clear Cement for most of the construction, occasionally some super glue for strength and white glue for any window glass. Also note that you should always follow the manufacturer's safety and use guidelines when using any of the products you see here. Construction starts with the motor and we'll be building the uh, intake area here, uh, but we'll also be replacing the distributor with a wired unit and another step. So delete that part from your assembly uh, if you're going to do that. The block, the heads, and the engine front can be assembled prior to paint. Now assemble the headers prior to painting too, <clears throat> and then uh, paint the motor and the transmission aluminum. The front mounts on the motor are steel, and the headers are steel, and the starter is black with a gold solenoid. The belt is flat black. Assemble the tops of the intakes with the sides and, uh, and its top, and then don't add the distributor. So install that onto the motor, and then add the valve covers. Install the alternator on the belt, and the belt to the motor. Now add the oil pan and transmission pans, and add the starter. Install the headers in place. Wanted to do a little extra, so I got the wiring diagram for the motor. And I'm going to use an aftermarket distributor that's pre-wired. Uh, with a coil and it comes from Morgan Automotive Detail. Uh, you can find these online and uh, they, they're pretty nice units. Um, there's a lot of different brands but um, uh, this is the one that I use. So uh, first you're going to uh, paint the, uh, or the drill out the hole for the distributor shaft and then paint it steel and super glue it in and then super glue the cap with the wires onto the shaft. Drill out the locations on the cylinder heads and cut a little black wire for the boots uh, and put it on each wire then match the wires up to the uh, spark plug holes according to the diagram and then slide them into place so that it looks correct and bend them uh, as they would normally be seen on a car motor and then super glue all the wires into place then add the coil to the center while and cut it to fit sitting it where you've placed it on the motor and then paint the strap on the coil silver. Next up is the uh, interior so we'll be painting the uh, interior pan steel with the feet brace and hump aluminum. Now the gas pedal and the pedal plate are steel colored and the shifter base is steel with a black knob. The speaker boxes are steel too. Now assemble the seats and paint them flat black. The fire extinguisher is transparent red and then attach the speakers. On the hump you can attach the fire extinguisher brake and shoot levers and shifter. Now add the pedal plate to the floor and the pedal into place. Install the seats now too. Get these parts out of the kit and paint the chassis pan steel with a black gas tank and a steel tank cap. Now add the amps into place and install the interior and add the firewall. Now install the oil filter. Grab these parts to assemble the roll cage and paint them all with a, a semi-gloss black for a, a finished look. These parts get assembled in place so install one side and then add the front lower crossbar, the top crossbar, and the rear brace. And then add the other side in place and line up the bars to that. And add the rear X brace into place then. 
grab the parts uh, to begin working on the dash and paint the dash semi-gloss black with flat black instrument panel section and the wheel and column pod are semi-gloss black as well. When that's dry you can add the de decals and decal 21 goes on the dash and then 17, 18, 19 and 20 go on the pod. Now add the column to the dash, the pod on the column and the wheel on the column too. The interior is next, so paint the back panel steel. The batteries are flat black with a steel base and the fuel pumps are steel. The door panels are flat black with an NOS bottle which is blue. Install the nitrous bottle onto the X-brace and then add the batteries in place uh, and the fuel pumps as well. Now add the rear panel, install the dash and the cage and add the door panels to the interior tub. To work on the suspension you'll need these parts. Now paint the rod black uh, with flat black boots and the spindles are steel and the frame is semi-gloss black. Add the tie rod in place on the A-arms and then install the spindles and the frames uh, to each side of the firewall. The rims and tires can be put together now so grab those parts out of the kit and note that the fronts are, are small and the rears are large and paint all the rim back parts silver. Then the tires are made to only fit one way properly so Remove the center area of the smaller tires around the edge of the tire and then remove the center area from the larger tire leaving a ring on the inner area. Uh, there's cutting lines there that will uh, provide a guide for the tires. I like to give the tires a worn look by pressing and rolling the tread on some fine sandpaper about a 220 grit dry paper and uh, this will wear the tread enough giving it a uh, used look so then insert the rim fronts into the tires and flip them over and attach the rear uh, and as you can see these are uh, these are quite uh, quite different looking tires. Now use some caution here uh, to hold the backs of the spindles and then attach the front tires to the car carefully by snapping the rim uh, onto the spindle ends just uh, make sure that you get direct pressure and uh, straight lines so that you don't break those spindles off. Now uh, locate the motor mounts and uh, make sure you scrape off any paint or uh, chrome of, if you have any uh, that is in the way of your gluing and contact points and then uh, install the motor into place on the frame. Grab these parts for the turbo charger and it can be assembled now so paint the filters flat white and the belt flat black then assemble the top and bottom adding the front and back into place. Add the filters on each side and attach the completed unit to the chassis. Now we can grab the parts for the uh, radiators and install those so assemble the fronts and the rears of the radiators and paint the fans black. The radiator hoses are flat black and they, they go behind the air filters and note the instruction sheet does not show the air filters and it seems like the radiators are in front but they, they go behind. Now add the turbo pipes and on my assembly the pipes were a little short. Uh, all my assemblies were correct and double checked the fit but uh, it might be an error uh, but I, I couldn't find it so uh, just be aware that, of that and add the front hose to both radiators and the bottom hose front to the motor uh, at the rear of the radiator. Now we'll add the, these parts, the uh, rear axle and the wheelie bars. Uh, so assemble the differential and attach the wheelie bars in place then add the cross member and the stabilizer bar and paint the assembly steel. Now the wheels on the wheelie bar are flat black color. Get these parts out to finish up the rear chassis and paint the chassis panel steel. The shocks, exhaust and drive shaft are gunmetal color. Now again you'll uh, attach the rears onto the uh, axle spindles and make sure that you back those up with a little pressure and push them straight on until they snap into place and insert the drive shaft into the transmission and install the rear suspension with the drive shaft in the differential. Now add the exhaust into place. At this point you'll have a completed rolling chassis uh, for your Pro Street car and you'll set this uh, aside to dry to start assembly on the body sections. Get these body parts out that will be used in the major assembly 
and most of them can be pre-assembled before paint to make it uh, easier and more uniform. So add the front and rear bumpers to the car at this time. Now we'll work on the snorkel for the hood and it's a two-part unit with a seam right down the center. To properly build that you'll need to fill and sand this smooth. So to start I used a little testers glue and put it together to fill the gap. And when assembled and squeezed tight, the, the glue leaves a little excess that you can scrape off and sand smooth. And this will fill most of the line. And I used some thick super gel um, as a gap filler to fill the rest and then sanded it smooth and mount the snorkel to the hood. Inside uh, of the roof of the body, you'll find some ejector pin marks. Uh, so if you're building a contest model, uh, you'll want to uh, sand those off and, and finish them more uh, properly. So locate and sand smooth all of the mold lines uh, on the body. And if you find any blemishes, go ahead and use your favorite filler there to fill those and sand those too. Then I use like a six to 800 uh, grit sandpaper uh, to you know kind of smooth those out. And then when that's all done, uh, I use an 800 grit wet sand. And then using a high quality primer, you want to cover the inside and outside of the body and all of the body parts. And once cured, then wet sand the, pri and the primered car with a 800 grit sandpaper as well. Then rinse and let air dry. Once that's dry, uh, follow up by painting the whole car silver. And the silver base will help give uh, the second color a smooth finish and no color transitions. So the car needs to be taped off to keep the silver on the bottom from getting covered. Uh, so note that the instructions have you tape straight across the body line but you actually need to tape and paint along the decal line for the top color as the decals have clear spots uh, that the silver will show through uh, and <laughs> show through from the painting so um, it's you know pink after that and it won't be correct so cut the decals out then as if you were installing them to see where you want that tape to go that tape line and then take a look at this photo for a, a general uh, idea for this pink color I needed something pretty bright so I just used some fingernail polish and thinned it down and shot that through my airbrush um, it's about about this consistency of lacquer um, and you want to thin that down to about 2% uh, milk kind of consistency then just shoot it on the car in very light coats as you would a normal paint. Um, it works just fine. It's lacquer paint. Once your paint's fully cured and dried you can apply the decals and as you can see here uh, these are large decals full body length actually so apply those with plenty of warm water and then uh, once you've got them into position uh, use some of that decal setting solution to make sure that they uh, follow the contours properly. Once that's uh, finished and you've got your decals done, let them set overnight to dry and then apply a clear coat to seal them into position. On each side of your car, detail all the window moldings on the sides the front and the back uh, with some black detail and the wipers are black too. I dip the windows in some uh, pledge floor floor care polish uh, and then wick that off and let it dry. That provides a barrier to prevent glues from uh, uh, adhering to it or smudging actually and makes them look thinner and crisper. Once that's dried uh, I painted the visors and the frosted area at the bottom of the windshield uh, black and you can either tape that off or freehand it if you like. Um, and then when that was done you can uh, get them all out on a paper towel let them dry for installation. Run a bead of uh, white glue uh, around the perimeter and then just place your windows uh, into position uh, and snug them in there so that they stick and uh, that glue will dry clear and you won't notice it. Grab these parts for the headlights and paint the outer lens uh, corner turn signal yellow inside and then run a black sharpie around the lens and the inner headlight lines uh, to create the black gaskets. Then install the bezels into the body from the inside and add the lenses on the outside with some of that white glue. The rear tail lights are next as well as the exhaust ports and on the inside of the red lens use a black sharpie and fill in the raised areas uh, leaving the circles untouched and then on the outside use a silver sharpie to fill in the indented squares. 
Now use uh, some of that white glue and add the backup lights into place and install this in place on the body. Then add the exhaust ports uh, to the body's sides. Now slide the chassis into place uh, from the front first and drop it down towards the rear. It'll fall right into place there with no problems. Then attach it to the body with a little glue. Now this is what your trunk area will look like uh, once you drop the body into place. And uh, as you can see the car is starting to take shape uh, into final form. And here is the uh, engine bay with the car body in place so you can see it's uh, nestled in there pretty neat. But it looks great with twin blowers and, and twin radiators. Gather these parts for the final rear end pieces and paint the chute mount aluminum and the chute a flat black. Then cut the uh, license tag and apply it to the chute mount. Now attach the chute mount on to the rear end and the, attach the spoiler to the trunk lid and attach that to the body. Now add the spoiler supports to the spoiler and the chute mount and install the mirror faces. Now add the hood to the car to complete construction. This build has no leftover parts, only the unused sponsor decals that you don't apply. Well there you have it. This uh, overall was a pretty easy build uh, other than a few fit issues. The motor has nice details and, and the addition of the wired distributor really finishes it off nicely. Um, so you might want to consider that. The interior is fairly well detailed when done and the dash is plenty of detail for a race car and the decals for the instruments fit correctly. Uh, the chassis assembles easily and it's solid uh, when you're done. The roll cage parts were straight and they all went together with no issues. The body fit was good and the parts were correct and didn't need a lot of cleanup. Now the instructions were wrong on the paint guide so you're going to want to adjust that to my suggestions to make sure that it looks right. But overall the build was great. It's been around for a while and there's still the mold is still crisp and clean. I'd buy one and put it on my shelf if you want a conversation piece. We hope you like this premium step-by-step -step scale model kit review. And so that you don't miss any more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. But you can find us on Facebook and also at our website, www.rightonreplicas.com. Thanks.